Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I hope you have had a wonderful weekend. It is Tuesday, the day before Halloween, actually, and uh, maybe you have plans, maybe you don't. My plans are pretty much the same as every other Wednesday. Go to work, uh, except that I have very silly Halloween leggings and uh, silly Halloween socks, so It's basically just wearing silly clothes and uh, Halloween earrings for me. We often do uh, a crazy amount of um, preparation for trick-or-treaters. My husband loves Halloween, and he often gives out either the king-size candy bars or the movie theater boxes of candy. Uh, He's done that many years in a row, and we are not doing that this year, but we will probably be getting back to it next year. This is why I'm not going to tell you where I live, because (laughs) we we get mobbed, because my husband loves to give out ginormous boxes of candy. I think he'd give out uh, bigger if he could find them. At any rate, he loves Halloween. I love Halloween. We just love it in different ways. Silly clothes, giant candy, you know whatever. At any rate, this is not a Halloween podcast. This is a book podcast, and I am happy to say that I have another interview today. Today's interview is with author Lori A. Egan about her book, Fabulous, and Opera Buffa. This is um, a bit of a departure for Lori, as she'll talk about in the interview. She writes a lot of poetry, and her other novels are... Um, thriller, suspense, uh, maybe a little darker. This one is funny. It's lighthearted. It is a, you know, if you are looking for a quick weekend read, if you're looking for a beach read, even though I know it's the end of October, but hey, we all still need beach reads, right? You just don't have to read it on a beach. This is hilarious and it is so much fun. And let me give you the description of it. An opera singer, Gilbert Eugene Rose, moonlights as a drag queen and a diva divine, Kiri Duyuwana, in order to pay his rent. However, Gil is dying to become famous on the New York operatic stage. Unfortunately, he might get his wish when he lands lead roles as a soprano and tenor in separate productions and is also hired to sing Handel by a dangerous female gangster who is at war with the producer of one of the two operas. Suddenly, happy-go-lucky Gil finds himself stranded in the middle of Mobster Boulevard, a flutter in heels, dresses, and wigs, with only his wits for protection and a new romance for inspiration. So, really, it has a little bit of everything. It has opera. It has uh, mobsters. It has um, danger. But it also has humor and hilarious characters, um, secondary characters. Gil himself is multi-layered and faceted. Uh, you may hear the, the you know the description of Gil as someone who moonlight, moonlights as a drag queen and a, a diva, and you might have an, a certain image in your mind. And yes, you get a little bit of what you may be picturing, but there is a lot more to Gilbert Eugene Rose than might at first meet the eye. He is um, actually, there. Uh, there's a lot of layers. I don't want to, I don't want to give too much away. I want Lori to talk about him as a character and I would love for you to read the book, which we have a giveaway for. So if you want a um, lighthearted, fabulous, hilarious, wonderful, um, it's not quite 
it might be a novella. It's uh, it's a little over 200 pages. I should actually look up and see how long a novella is because I just keep making that up in my own head. A little over 200 pages. So it, it's a quick read. And if you would like to win a copy, listen to the end of this podcast and you'll find out how to do that in the meantime. I'm going to turn now to the interview with Lori so she can talk about this book as well as some of her other writing. So here we go with that interview with author Lori A. Egan about her newest book, fabulous. Hi, Lori. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Sarah. I'm so glad that you are here. And we are here to talk about your new book, Fabulous. But before we do that, I would love for my listeners just to get to know you a little bit. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. Um, thank you very much for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Um, I am a, a writer of in, in her 60s. I live in the coast of New Jersey, and um, I've been writing full-time pretty much for the last 20 years. Uh, it was my first passion when I was a child, and then for some reason in when I was making a decision for college, I wound up going to Carnegie Mellon in the visual arts in graphic design. So my uh, first career was as a book designer and then also as a fine arts photographer, and I still do the latter. Uh, so I'm sort of skilled in both, and uh, that's pretty much my story. I'm, I'm a workaholic. <laughs> okay. So you were a book designer. Did, did you do your own covers then? Most In most cases. Uh, three out of my four uh, novels or uh, fiction collections uh, have been my own designs, and all four of my poetry books are both my photographs and my designs. Oh, nice. Um, my first publisher... Uh, preferred another kind of an image, which I didn't, but I, I got overruled. So, okay. um, that's the way it goes sometimes. Yes. Yes. So um, as I said in the intro, we're here to talk about the book Fabulous. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, this is this is sort of an outlier for me. Most of my work is either in literary genres or literary suspense, psychological suspense, something like that. Fabulous is an outright comedy. I make no bones about it. It's just, just one of those funny, lighthearted, happy books that I, I really enjoyed um, writing. I, I just said it was just a pleasure. Uh, the book is really about a, a young gay tenor who has studied opera, but he can't make a living as an opera singer yet. He lives in New York City, and all of a sudden, um, he gets hired to um, be a soprano, of all things, <laughs> in a Mozart opera, Cosi Fan Tutti, in one production, and then he's hired as, as a tenor in Rigoletto in another, and they're both going on at the same time. In addition, um, a, a, a rather scary mobsterette, I guess you would call her, LaDonna, is uh, asking him to sing Handel, and she turns out to be the archenemy of uh, the Mozart producer. So we have a, a little bit of a mob war going on, and poor Gil is trying to uh, patch between several identities, both male and female, and also do a small um, drag show down in the village. <laughs> right. uh, so he, he, it's it's a madcap adventure, really, I would say, comedy. Yeah, yes. Um, uh, the main character is is Gil, or uh, Gilbert, and he... Gilbert, um, yeah. There's there was one there was one sentence that I outlined that I underlined that because it just cracked me up because he was trying he was trying to be this person as that person while thinking of this other like he was he has so many personas going on that sometimes he can't remember who he is. Exactly. Sometimes he'll show up with a wig on where he shouldn't have one or he's worrying about, you know, his lipstick or right. <laughs> uh, whatever. So, right. yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's really a busy boy. <laughs> yes, he is. Things take off uh, in a couple of good ways and then in some uh, some complicated ways. So, <laughs> yeah. What was your inspiration for the story? Well, I, I've been saying this. I've been doing readings for the book lately, and, I, and people ask me the same thing. And one of the th the main thing that happened to me was I was sitting on my deck one summer day, and I was looking out over the ocean. I have a view of Manhattan in the far distance and the ocean, and I was minding my own business. And all of a sudden, this voice came to me, and I'm like, "Go away! I'm I'm resting." <laughs> And he wouldn't go away, and so I went into my computer, and out came Gilbert Eugene Rose in all of his quirks and funny voice, and, and I just thought he was charming and, and wonderfully humorous. So 
I really basically followed his lead. Like he just took off like a greyhound. Um, and that this happens to me on occasion, and I can't explain it unless I have multiple personality disorder. <laughs> uh, uh, and I, I've talked to a couple of other writers, and they say sometimes this happens to them too. And it's sort of like channeling, I guess you might say. So he was really the main, um, he, he really sort of created himself. And then I have a background uh, as a photographer and also as a um, subscriber at the Metropolitan Opera. Um, so I have a lot of opera background in the sense that I've, I've been to, you know, been involved with the opera company of Philadelphia. And also I, I did do one freelance at the Met. So I, I, I'm not a musician by any means. Uh, this book doesn't require an opera understanding or even a passion for opera. It's, it's, it's pretty friendly in terms of that. Uh, there's nothing esoteric about it. Mm -hmm. That was going so, to be a follow-up question was, you know, how, how, how did you have to do research for the opera or was that something that you were already interested in? No, I, I pretty much, uh, I, I still had to do some technical, uh, you know, I had to go back, for example, there's a scene on stage uh, for Cosi Vantuti and I had to just sort of recollect what the order and who, who would be in it. And then I had to sort of create my own sort of mini, mini stage set uh, so I knew where my characters would be moving on the stage. Mm -hmm. So I had to do a little research as far as that goes, but nothing else. Yeah, okay. So now that you know a little bit more about the book Fabulous, I do have to jump in here with our first break of the podcast. But when we come back, we'll be talking more about Gilbert as a main character and what about him will resonate with readers. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with Lori E. Excuse me, Lori A. Egan about her new book, Fabulous. We were talking before the break about the main character, Gilbert, and she's going to talk a little bit more about him as a main character and uh, as well as how he interacts with some of the other characters. So let's go ahead and get back to that interview. So talk a little bit more about uh, Gilbert as the main character. What about... Well, in this case, him. Uh, it, it, the book's in first person, so as Gilbert goes through different personas, but yeah, he's a him. He's a him. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't ever specifically specify his preferred pronouns. But what about Gilbert? Do you think will resonate with your readers? Well, you know, even though he's a gay guy, um, I really believe, and I, I can back this up somewhat by, by friends and acquaintances who have read the book that it's really a mainstream uh, audience that this book would appeal to, as well as the LGBT group, um, because it's just a cheerful, fun book. And I, I think that, you know, there's not particularly a, a set audience for this right now. You know, particularly right now, I think we all need something a little bright and cheerful in our lives. Um, and I think this is just a wonderful little book for that. Uh, just It's just good fun. And when we first encounter Gilbert, we, you know, you get the impression maybe he's going to be this kind of, I mean, he, the book starts, he's, he's visiting a medium yeah, <laughs> and, and she tells him his future and you think, oh my goodness, is he going to be kind of this maybe shallow kind of flighty character? But he really isn't. I mean, there's so many levels and layers to Gilbert's character that we keep finding as we go through. So for me, that's one thing I really appreciated. 
Yeah, I think he's, you know, and he's got ambition. Uh, he's worked very hard, actually, at, at his opera, um, you know, studying it in school. And he's, uh, he really, you know, he's good enough, obviously, uh, and talented enough to do as well as he is. So, um, you know, he, he's not just, just some guy with uh, high-flown ideas that don't match his ability. Right, exactly. Um, are there, Gilbert just sort of came to you, but are there any kind of autobiographical elements within the story, whether it's characters or settings? Um, not really. I, I you know, I, I've been a part of some of the uh, New York City opera scene, but I made up my theaters uh, that are in the book and my settings. In fact, I, you know, I spent a lot of time doing little drawings uh, of a couple of like the backstage areas and things like that. Uh, I wouldn't say there's really anything too autobiographical in this particular novel that I can think of. Um, not really, no. Other books, yes, uh, that I have written, not not this one. Okay. And are there any plans for more <laughs> stories involving Gilbert? Has he has he quieted down, or is he still in your head? He's quieted down for the moment, so I, I don't really know. I mean, I would have to get his voice back. That sounds a little crazy, but um, I, I don't know if I could do another one. Uh, it, it is tempting, because he's such a wonderful guy. And he's, he's funny, and he's sweet, and... Um, you know, he gets into all kinds of scrapes. So uh, he, it would be fun to do another one. But at this point, no, I've been moving a little more towards just my usual literary work. And that's where I've been heading uh, the last few months. So uh, you've mentioned your, your other literary works. So talk a little bit more about, um, well, I know you do uh, poetry, you have a couple of poetry collections. So can you talk about those a little bit? Yes. In fact, uh, when Fabulous came out in September, I also had a new poetry uh, chapbook, um, Presence and Absence, that was just published. And uh, I also have two le- full length collections, uh, Snow Shadows, A Stranger, Beneath the Lion's Paw, and then another chapbook, The Sea and Beyond. Um, these were all published by Foothills, and unfortunately, they're not available on Amazon, so only through my website. But um, I, I had a, a good time with this one. This one is a little more somber, this new book, and uh, it's really about the idea that as you're getting a little bit older, suddenly the sense of being fully present begins to wane, and you begin to realize that you're moving more towards absence at some point. It's sort of like a a seasonal change where you go from maybe summer into fall or winter. And so this book is a lot about things that are changing. Um, uh, so those are, you know, the four books I've been doing. And uh, I started out writing poetry when I was seven. That was my first thing. So uh, mm. it's it's been really lovely to have a, a, a great publisher like Foothills to help me out. Yeah. And where do your ideas for the poetry come from? Because, you know, poems are obviously they're 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 shorter than um, like a, a novel. So you have to have more ideas. <laughs> so where do you do you, do you come up with individual poems? Is there kind of an overarching theme? How does that work for you? Well, I usually don't have an overarching theme. Uh, I keep a draft folder. So in that draft folder, I keep things that are in process. Uh, and then I just try to work on them, come back to them every few months. And then sometimes a book will take shape just by the nature of what's collected there. Uh, my main inspiration for writing is really sort of twofold. One, I'm, I'm very much a nature writer, very lyrical for the most part. And because of where I live and grew up, you know, I've, as I said, I've got a view of the ocean. Uh, when I grew up, I had woods behind me. Uh, it was really, it's a beautiful area, very hilly. Uh, right now, I'm at the at the top of a hill, very high hill, looking out uh, over the ocean. And so, as a result, you know, having that kind of beautiful nature around me from my early age you know, when I started to now, I think it's been a real inspiration, uh, almost a muse, if you might say that. Um, And then other things, sometimes I'm just working on a a mood or an emotion, uh, a problem. So sometimes that may be uh, the cause of a poem. Uh, 
sometimes I've gone, because I'm also a fine arts photographer, sometimes I've gone out to take some photographs and then been so inspired by what I saw that I come back and I do um, a, a piece as a result. Okay. And so what are you working on right now? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> um, I, I started one project and shelved it. Uh, it, it this was um, either a novella or a novel. I'm not sure which. And then I, I'm starting another piece that might be a novella. Uh, I have one that I really love that's got some magical realism in it. It's it's tentatively called The Black Leopard's Kiss. And unfortunately, novellas are very hard to sell to agents or publishers. So I've been trying to figure out a, a couple of short stories and maybe a bookend novella that might pick up some of the themes in the first one. So I'm tentatively working on that, but I'm not really very happy with what I've got so far. So I'm not I'm not going to say much more about that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> not it might a never, problem. Might might just you know get shoved under the mattress. <laughs> right, as sometimes happens. Okay, so you said you started writing poetry when you were seven. Mm -hmm. um, what 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 prompted that? Well. Um, I, I lived uh, in a town, Lenox Island, which is very close to where I live now, and it was an area, as I said, it was really beautiful, but all of the uh, my classmates pretty much lived in town, uh, which was a mile or two away, which and, and a very hilly mile or two. So I didn't have a lot of friends. I didn't have any siblings. I didn't have grandparents, um, and... I wasn't really too close to cousins, et cetera. So I was pretty much a, um, a lonely kid, and I didn't really fit in so well uh, with my peer group. So I think I started writing just to sort of make myself present, uh, to give me a sense of um, doing something. It was really natural for me. Uh, my mother is a, is, was a very fine painter, so there's no writing background in my family and my father was a builder so they both were busy all day so I was pretty much on my own. I think the writing started to deal with how I was feeling and also just to make myself to entertain myself so to speak. Mm -hmm. Do you have any of those early poems? I do <laughs> and I, I, I started a novel I wrote and I was just I started right before my 13th birthday and I have that and um, it's in longhand, but then I taught myself how to type, so I have a typescript of it too. So it's, oh, nice. it's pretty. It's not that bad, actually. I'm I, I'm I'm always sort of surprised, but I do have some of the early poems. Not too many of them, but yeah, nice. We do have to take our second break of the podcast now, but when we come back, we'll have the conclusion to this interview with Lori A. Egan. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion to my interview with author Lori A. Egan. Um, you you went with the graphic design and the, the photography. You went that route. What then made you decide to start writing again well, or to I, not, not start but to take it more? 
I, I sort of continued, particularly with poetry. I did write short stories in high school, which, you know, and I, I was published a lot in our literary magazine. Um, but I I always did continue to do a lot of reading, and reading, but I didn't do it much fiction until later. Uh, it was something that just kept gnawing at me, and I knew I'd sort of chickened out on myself, I think, when I decided to go into the visual arts because I had been accepted at Bennington and Bard in creative writing. And really, uh, over over my lifetime, that was the one single decision I've made that I wish I had made another one. I wish I'd gone to one of those two schools. Um, I, I started out at Princeton University Press, and I was doing, um, you know, so I was within the publishing uh, arena, and then I was... My friends were editors. I was dealing with edited and, and written copy all the time, novels. I mean, not novels, but manuscripts. So I learned a fair amount about editing as well as you know, being a designer and uh, helping with the production of these these many books. Uh, but I, uh, so I, I was still sort of keeping close to the writing, even if I was in the visual uh, aspect of it. Um, and then I went freelance. Uh, in my 30s and worked for about 20 publishers as a book designer and then slowly as I began to feel like I was just tired of this after many years then I started writing again and then when my mother died I, I had a little bit of wherewithal I, that I inherited which allowed me to take the time to really concentrate on the writing which once I started it that's what I've been doing for 20 mm-hmm. some years yeah mm. Nice. Thank you. So uh, out of that experience, do you have advice for aspiring authors? Hmm. Well, it's a very, very different um, career path now than it used to be. Uh, In the old days, if you knew one person, you could get an agent or a publisher. Uh, You know, it was a much smaller community. But with the um, advent of the computer, unfortunately, what's happened is that the literary journals, the agents, the publishers are just besieged by uh, submissions. And it's just become extremely difficult to, to even have a short story published these days, much less to get an agent, uh, which, and, and unfortunately now, in order to be published by a fairly decent trade house or even a very good indie publisher, you almost always have to have an agent. So it's 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 become very difficult. I mean, the, the first thing that you need to do is really work at the craft, and you have to learn, you know, your 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 grammar, your punctuation, um, construction style, all of those basics, and then you have to just keep practicing. And it's just I sort of equate it to playing tennis. You wouldn't expect to pick a tennis racket up and then all of a sudden. Uh, be a world-class p- player, so you know you would be working on your backhand or your forehand or whatever. So, uh, practice is one of the biggest things that you need to do, and then um, and polishing a lot of editing, which unfortunately I don't think a lot of younger writers do that. In fact, a lot of older writers don't do that either. Um, so those are the first things I would say, and then just to slowly get your resume built up by having publications. Uh, that's that's pretty much what I would say, you know. So it's diligence and patience, and over, you know, editing and polishing constantly. Um, it's a good part of the whole process. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. When you uh, take the time to read, do you have favorite authors or genres? Uh, as far as genres go, I read everything from very literary work, uh, both classical pieces, you know, books as well as modern. Uh, I read also in suspense and some thrillers, mysteries. I'm reading, what am I reading right now? Just reading uh, Tanya French's new book. Uh, And I also will read occasionally some biographies and autobiographies and some poetry. Mostly, I would say I'm in the literary area. That's where I really like to read the most. And um, both older authors, and contemporary ones. As far as authors, I I go really the gamut. Patricia Highsmith inspired my first novel, uh, Jenny Kidd, Uh, that kind of sort of strange um, psychological suspense that she wrote. So she was a favorite author back then. Uh, Now I'm a little impatient with 
uh, her. I think she could have written a lot better uh, with more editing and more time. Um, I, I've enjoyed Virginia Woolf. Uh, my n- new book that's under contract for 2019 is about, again, an opera composer this time uh, who is writing an opera about Virginia Woolf and Vita Sackville West. So I was starting to incorporate some of the lyrics, uh, some of the, the sentences from their diaries, journals, and letters, but then I wound up having to rewrite them in my own voice because it was so hard to get permission. Mm-hmm. So uh, Wolf is certainly an influence, um, not not necessarily a good one these days because you know that style just isn't very popular. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of anybody else. Um, for this book, fabulous. Two authors I would definitely recommend are Stephen McCauley and Joe Keenan. They both have written some absolutely funny, funny books, uh, much in the same style and vein as fabulous is. And if anything, uh, having read them quite a few years ago, they were in the back of my mind perhaps when fabulous was coming out. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, you mentioned a website, so uh, tell people where uh, how they can find your website and um, if you're on any social media they can find you on. Okay, uh, my website is pretty simple. It's my full name with with the middle initial middle initial A, Laurie A Egan. So it's www. dot Laurie L A U R Y A and Egan E G A N Dot com, And I'm also on Facebook, and you can find me there looking up Laurie A. Egan. Um, any search will pull it up very easily. Uh, I'm also on LinkedIn, but I don't do as much there. And I'm also an Amazon author. I have an Amazon author page, and I'm also um, Poets and Writers and the Authors Guild also. Okay. Um, Goodreads? Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. And I think author's den. I <laughs> I can't keep them all <laughs> no, straight. <laughs> there's so many. <laughs> Thank you for that. I'm sure if we if people just did a search, they can find um, a lot of your of your sites. So, uh, is there anything else that we haven't talked about in terms of writing or your books or poetry or anything that we haven't covered that you would like to share? Uh, let me think. Um, well, I, I, I think that this, this book, is, as I say, is different from me, and I don't know that reading this you would necessarily immediately identify me with my previous books, which have been um, Jenny Kidd, which was set in Venice, as I say, a sort of psychological suspense, like uh, in the high Highsmith mode, I guess. And then Fog and Other Stories is a collection of mine, and there are 23 stories in there that uh, deal with the concept of fog, both literally and figuratively. Uh, you know, fog of, of grief, anger, dreams, um, all kinds, of illness, dementia, all kinds of things like that. Uh, I'm very pleased with that that collection. And then the Outcast Oracle was my last uh, published novel, and that is in a young adult to adult kind of uh, range in a Mark Twain style, uh, which is slightly humorous, but it's a serious book. And that got a Kirkus Review uh, listing as a best book of 2013. Mm. So I'm very pleased with that one. Um, that's a really, that's a good, strong book. Um, and it's gotten very good reviews. So um, I, 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 as I say, I've got a new one coming out 2019, I hope, uh, Wave and D Minor. So the other books are probably more of a piece than Fabulous is, but I think that this, some of the short stories have a little of the same humor as Fabulous does. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, I, I let myself loose a little on, <laughs> <laughs> on this book. I don't know. Uh, uh, it, it was really quite an interesting process. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, just the cast of characters are so diverse and um uh, oh, I do have one question. So yeah. uh, Gilbert, as I mentioned, gets a little confused as to which character he is. <laughs> um, how did you keep track of that? <laughs> oh, that wasn't easy, let me tell you. Um, I kept uh, charts, a ca- like a little calendar, mm-hmm. uh, where he was, what he was doing when, and that helped me out uh, because otherwise I was getting terribly screwed up. And then I was trying to keep track of uh, descriptions of, of various people. Uh, so I, I made a lot of notes for this one just to help 
keep me organized. Uh, as I say, I did sketches of of the theater and other things too because it was just difficult. Uh, there's one scene where uh, a lot goes on, on on the stage, so it was really important for me to visualize that well. Um, but you know, he, he's he's a charming little guy. I, I really I enjoyed my time with him. I mean, he made me laugh as I was writing. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> yeah, I kept thinking of that one scene in Mrs. Doubtfire where Robin Williams is switching back and forth between his his male character and Mrs. Doubtfire, mm-hmm. and he gets a little drunk and confused. Uh, this book at times is that scene just multiplied by about ten. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and it has touches of Lagage of Fall, um, mm-hmm. which actually was, uh, uh, I, I photographed Shelley Berman in that um, live uh, in New Hope, Pennsylvania once. So, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of that. And there's a little bit of the drag thing, but not much. It doesn't, it's not heavy handed. It's very light. As I say, it's not, not uh, just for a gay, gay reader by any means mm-hmm. at all. In fact, you know, I, I'd say, Everybody would enjoy this book. Um, it, it, it doesn't matter who you are, what, you, what your gender is, or what your uh, you know orientation is. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is just good fun. I agree. <laughs> and like I said, the cast of characters is so diverse that people are going to find, if if not necessarily exactly themselves, they're definitely going to recognize people that they know in that cast of characters. Yeah. So yeah, one of the things that's been fun for me, or actually scared the daylights out of me, because I had to do some readings from this book. And I was trying to, you know, figure out how how foolish I was going to look trying to read this out loud. <laughs> but it went it went better than I thought. But I was really trying to get into Gilbert's head and and his voice, and that's so far from my own that it's you know it's just night and day. Yeah. So it was it was a bit of a challenge, but I I really really worked on it because <laughs> he's got a very very specific kind of voice. Yes. Um, which and sense of humor actually makes me. Th- is is there any possibility? of this becoming an audio book because you'd need a very specific narrator I think well uh, in fact when uh, you know my last two readings uh, people were saying absolutely that, that I should do that um, I I don't know uh, I've never tried one before it's a possibility but I don't know whether my publisher is 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 a lovely lovely small press called uh, Tiny Fox Press and they've been just great but I don't know whether they would be up for such a thing or not <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, yeah, it'd be, a, it would be a lot of fun to listen to, I think, as an audio book. Yeah, but... I think it'd make a good film, too. Good, mm-hmm. good movie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. You'd have to block off some of Manhattan to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be the first time, I'm sure. No, no, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much what I've been, you know, doing. And as I say, I I work most most days all day, so I'm I'm unusual that I've had that luxury to do that. Uh, most people don't, so uh, it's been fun. It's been great. I'm finally feeling like I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, well, I want to thank you so much. I've had so much fun talking to you, and um, I love the book. I love Gilbert as a character. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your weekend to talk to me about Fabulous. Well, thank you very much, Sarah. It's been fun. And once again, I want to thank my guest, Lori A. Egan, for stopping by the podcast at that makes it sound like she was here, for taking the time out of her weekend to talk to me about her new book. And it really is fabulous, as the title suggests, and it's a lot of fun. And as I said before, a quick read, um, a funny read, a heartwarming read. There's, there's, There's everything. There's humor. There's a little danger. There's romance. There's all kinds of good things in this book. And it is also, uh, giveaway option. So if you are interested in reading Fabulous by Lori A. Egan, all you have to do to enter the giveaway is go to one of our social media pages, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, and comment on this episode, episode 118, interview with Lori A. Egan. Just make post a comment, uh, anything will do, and you'll be entered to win a copy of Fabulous. So again, that's Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Those links are in the show description of this episode. You can find them also on our website. And um, you should follow us on social media because you'll get all of the new up to all of the new episodes and other giveaway opportunities. So if you're interested in reading this book, please do enter our giveaway. The giveaway will go through Sunday, which is November 4th. Winners will be announced on Monday, November 5th. Thank you again for joining me. Please join me again on 
on Thursday for another episode of the GSMC Book Review Podcast. In the meantime, however you plan on celebrating Halloween or not celebrating Halloween or whatever it is that you're going to be doing tomorrow, I hope you have a great Wednesday and I will talk to you again on Thursday. But in the meantime, no matter how you are spending tomorrow, you should definitely go out there and get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from Movie to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program